I think that we have to understand that at the deepest possible level, opening the high frontier means making possible and ensuring the survival of the human race. And not just the human race, but all of those other species of animals and plants who have grown up with us in this wonderful thin biosphere on the surface of the earth, a place which may be, as far as we know, perhaps even unique in the whole universe. Life is extraordinarily rare, extraordinarily precious, and we have a great duty to preserve it, not necessarily to have it expand to some particular uh, total number of individuals, but to have it spread in a way that will ensure its safety. We know, unfortunately, that we are on a very fragile planet at the present time with the enormous number of nuclear weapons that there are spread throughout many nations of the world. We're living almost on a time bomb at the present time. These are the most dangerous decades in all of human history. We have the capability to destroy ourselves and yet we have not yet quite broken free of the limitations of that thin biosphere of the Earth. Once we do so, once there are ordinary, living, breathing human beings, along with their plants, their animals, their food crops, and so on, building biospheres of their own, expanding farther and farther away through the solar system and eventually out to the stars themselves, the human race will be truly unkillable. And I think that at the deepest level, that has to be our motivation. When we, when we look back in history to the earlier waves of colonization that have occurred, the thing that's impressive about them is that it wasn't the rich and the famous who migrated. It was people who felt that in the surroundings they came from, there wasn't enough room for their creativity, their expansion, their freedom, their chance to do their own thing. Their chance simply to make a decent living for themselves and to support their families. We know how bad things are now in many parts of the world. The deforestation of almost every part of the tropical jungle is a terrible tragedy which is going on right now and, and on a time scale of years and decades at most. We know that the pressure to colonize, the pressure to go into new areas, open up new places where people can live is very, very great, and always has been. But if we look back at the successful colonizations of the past, and that of the North American continent is, of course, uppermost in our minds, we see that it was largely, although not entirely, young people who came. It was people who had the courage, the guts, to go and try something new. It was the people who felt that the situation they came from was, in many cases, intolerable. If we look around us at the world we live in today, a world of increasing crowding, uh, increasing very, very serious problems, we see that some of the same pressures that were there before are there again. There are many people living in the world who feel that they're in places and in situations that are repressive, that don't give them an adequate scope to even make decent livings for their families, certainly not to live in freedom. Uh, when we open up the high frontier by building colonies in space and have those colonies extending farther and farther outward in our solar system, there is going to be room for people who want to leave the Earth to go out and to develop their own colonies and to do their own thing. Do their own thing not in a sense of not in a sense of wild abandonment or anything of that sort. Because when you ask about the aspirations of people throughout the world today, they're mostly very modest aspirations. A decent living, a chance to live in freedom. Those are the basics. That's the second important thing about opening the high frontier. And I think that in doing so, we're following a, a history which began really when the first fish 
came out of the water and became amphibians. The expansion to new ecological ranges is a natural part, not just of human history, but of all of the history of, of life. In opening the high frontier, there are important things which we can do very directly for the Earth itself, for people who are living here in the near future. One of the most important has to do with energy. As you know, there is a very, very close correlation between the amount of energy which is spent by a society and the standard of living of that society. People have tried lots of ways to beat that relationship, but aside from doing all the conservation that we can, we can't do very much about it. It's remarkable how close that correlation is. So the question becomes, how can we provide the amount of energy which a growing set of societies throughout the world really need without destroying the Earth in the course of it? We're not very comfortable about nuclear power. We're certainly not comfortable about burning fossil fuels because within less than 40 years, the buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to produce a very serious greenhouse effect. And so where are we going to get the energy which is so necessary for the aspirations of those people, particularly in developing societies on the surface of the Earth? The best answer that I've been able to find after a lot of careful investigation and research is to take that energy from the sun. Sunlight as a source of energy is not very practical if you wait to intercept it until it comes to the surface of the Earth. One thing, the day-night cycle turns it off at least half the time. And second, at least, uh, unless you happen to be in the middle of the Sahara Desert, cloud cover turns it off a lot of the rest of the time. Also, it's a source which changes its direction in the course of the day. Very difficult and awkward to use. But if one intercepts sunlight high above the Earth in a place where it's permanent, in high orbit, and then converts it to some harmless form that retains the energy. The present best choice is uh, low energy radio waves of, of a low enough frequency that they can't be damaging to anybody. Transmits that radio wave energy to the surface of the Earth and converts it to ordinary electricity that we can plug into, one has a solution to the energy problems of the world.